Hey guys, it's Milan B or Milan from Facebook or MilanShop.com. I'm here to do my Thrift Surf Crew video update. I do have quite a few things completed. Uh, let me just start off right away. Uh, this is one I showed you guys last time in my last video. I completed the liner shawl. It looks like this. I am really pleased with how it turned out. I love the striping. I love the size of it. I love how soft it is and how stretchy it is as well. Uh, this is sock yarn and I actually don't remember the exact details but you can check out my last video. I know I mentioned there what type of yarn it is in the colorway as well. So do go check it out. I also do have it up on Ravelry but probably not with updated pictures of the completed project. So just <laughs> FYI. But I, I am very happy with it. I love the pattern. It was so easy. Um, it was an ideal pattern for me to take to work, um, just pick up during breaks and work on it, that kind of thing. So since I finished this, I decided to make another. And this one uh, was made with a worsted weight. It looks like this. Uh, this was made with Bernat, um, Bernat Mosaic yarn in the colorway Psychedelic. And if you are friends with me, or if you follow me on Instagram uh, or do, or you like my page on Facebook you have already seen a picture of this completed project or object I am really happy with this as well the only difference is since it is worsted weight I used size 8 needles but that's about it and it is about the same size as the other and oh, I did want to say one more thing about this yarn it reminds me of cotton because it's not really soft but you know like that cotton like peaches and cream or any cotton you would use for like um you know like to make the kitchen cotton there you go okay any kind of cotton that you can use for kitchen related stuff that's what this feels like or reminds me of um i don't think it's cotton though i think this is just acrylic but i, I finished one of those uh, that also should be on my ravelry again probably not with updated pictures uh, the next thing i completed was which I also showed you guys, I think, uh, was my panel. And again, if you do follow me on Instagram or like my face, <laughs> like my Facebook page <laughs> on Facebook, you have already seen a picture of this. Um, I have completed the second row of the ghosts, and it looks like that. So far, I have the mushrooms and the ghosts. And I have decided that for the third row, I don't know if that will be my final row or not, but for the third row, I'm going to make, um, I'm going to use green colors. I'm not exactly sure what types of greens I'm going to use, but I'm going to make it in greens and I'm going to do uh, a baddie, which is the Goomba from the Super Mario Brother games. Uh, the Goomba is that guy up there you can see looking at you from the shelf. <laughs> so I'm going to make a, a third row with green uh, and I will be doing the Goomba. Okay, two more finished objects. Uh, this also, I showed you guys last time. It's also Mario related. I'm sure you guys remember it. It's the baby blanket. It's finally complete. It looks like this. And it is reversible, as you can see. It looks the same on both sides. I actually did not measure how big it is, but I'm pretty sure it's baby sized. Or maybe like if you want to use it as a lap lap gan or lap afghan, whatever you want to call it. I'm really happy with how that turned out. I really like the technique of making a reversible fabric or a re reversible item like that. I think I'll be using it more often. But I am actually really glad that's, that's completed because that took me a while to do. And whenever I worked on it for, you know, more than a few rows it killed my arm so I'm just glad <laughs> glad that's done probably the next thing I do if it's something similar it will be on an, an even smaller scale but we'll see uh, the next thing I got completed was this bag and I know I showed I showed you guys this bag a while ago maybe it was last month maybe a few weeks ago I actually don't remember probably last month maybe before that even but it looks like this it's just a regular bag. The only difference is I added the, the side details and I actually added a zipper and I lined it. That's really new to me. It amazes me that I actually got it done. 
I chose a yellow zipper to kind of match the line here, the yellow line. And the inside, I just have a simple fabric from my stash. And I'm not a sewer at all, so, um, however, I did get a sewing machine actually quite a few years, years ago with a bunch of random fabric, you know, just in case I wanted to start up another hobby and just have never used it. But since I had it handy, I did make the, the actual uh, lining uh, with my sewing machine. Um, and it was kind of bad because the first time I made it, I had to, or I, I sewed on the zipper the wrong way. So I had to rip it back out and do it again, which that actually was the most time consuming thing about it that I did not enjoy. <laughs> um, however, yeah, I did the lining in the zipper with the sewing machine, but I actually sewed it to, to the crochet bag by hand, which is actually not so bad, but then this isn't really a big bag, so yeah, it wasn't too bad. And the only details I added on the sides were the, let me see, the bows. I don't know if you can even tell it's a bow or not. But the reason I added the bows was because uh, the bag, it's the crochet bag was not made in the round. Um, and even if it was, uh, because it had stripes on there, uh, it left like a, a seam here of when the color changes happened. So I just thought I would add bows on the sides so it would cover up the seam. Um, you can definitely make this in the round. I'm thinking of maybe doing a tutorial, but it's so simple. I don't even know if you need one. <laughs> and I have no idea. Probably, I don't know if I'll, I, I would include the sewing, the zipper and all of that in there because there's so many good videos out there already available. Uh, the last thing that I got completed was my yarn. I think last time I also showed you guys I was spinning some yarn and I have completed it. Uh, so far it looks like this. I mean, this is what it looks like. This is the final product. This is my yarn. It's not the prettiest, it's not the most colorful, but it's something I did on my own, so I'm kind of pleased with it. Um, it is rather thick and thin, and it didn't actually turn out the exact colors that I wanted it to be. Not that I really had that much of an idea, I just know I wanted a dark blue. And that's pretty much it. I did this on a drop spindle. Uh, once I finished uh, spinning it, I made it into a ball and then I plied it from one ball so there was no waste. Um, that made me realize that um, I'm still very in inconsistent um, even though I think that's expected because I'm really such a newbie still. This is like the second skein I made ever that I plied two ounces. One, uh, the first ounce was the cream color, the natural color. The second ounce uh, was the one I dyed in blue. So there's actually a big difference on how I, sp I, I spun both. Uh, for the blue one, I guess I spun it a lot thinner than the, the natural one because I ended up with maybe like five yards or so of just blue color like this rather than like the white and the blue combined. Again, which is not a bad thing, but just lets me know that I still have to work on it. I did enjoy the process, however, by the end of the plying, I was just getting tired of it again. I tried to relax and enjoy myself, but I just wanted to get it finished, and that's all I wanted. <laughs> so, again, I think a spinning wheel would be such an awesome accessory to use. But, you know, just making or looking at it, uh, doing some research, they're pretty expensive, so I'm really having to think about that, whether I can get one or should I get one, especially since I don't know if if I do get one or in general, if I will be spinning only for myself, will I be spinning to, you know, to sell or uh, I just don't know yet. I'm still such a newbie. So I think I'm just going to, you know, rehash, think a little bit more about it and see what happens. Now, I do have a couple of works in progress. Uh, the first one I will not show. It's my crochet top. Um, I think I, sh I know I showed it to you guys last time. Uh, there's not much to show there. I did maybe five rows um, overall. So again, not much to show, so I'm not gonna bother, but that I, I am still working on that. Uh, the next one is from this book. 
and I actually ordered this one a long time ago maybe I think it was last month sometime uh, from Walmart but they actually ended up giving me or sending me a wrong book they sent me something about vampires for whatever reason that obviously is not this <laughs> so I ended up returning that and I just got this off Amazon um, you guys can definitely check it out I will I will be posting that in my blog as you guys know, I do have a blog relating to my videos usually, so go check that out as well. But yeah, what I'm making from this one is the unicorn. Even though I will not be making it a unicorn, I will be making it a horse um, inspired by Epona from The Legend of Zelda, if you guys are familiar. Um, I really just started yesterday, so again, not much to show. All I have is the beginning of the nose, and you can't really tell what it is, but... That is what I'm working on. Um, I'm pretty sure the next time I'll have it completed. And I think I will be making a couple of versions, maybe two or three, because just depending on what, you know, what pictures or what game you're getting your, you know, uh, your inspiration <laughs> from. There you go. Um, it just depends, you know, what colors and stuff to use. So I will see what happens with that. Uh, those are actually the only... Well, there's one more work in progress that I don't even want to mention because I have no idea when I will get it completed, which are my socks, which have taken me months now to complete. And I'm actually stuck on the parts um, right before the heel. I'm making them toe up. And I'm stuck there because, one, I don't know what heel to use. And two, I can never remember to purchase the pattern for the kiss sleep heel. The kiss lip heel I know I've heard a lot of you guys who are using it who like the, who like the technique um, say it is easy it doesn't leave gaps or holes etc I just can't seem to actually go and purchase that for I just keep rem not remembering since I have not worked on my socks for so long but I think one of these days I really would just go do that and also I think I'm really paranoid because my gauge was kind of off. The socks are already a little too big. And my other problem with that is I have no idea how to measure how how much I need to knit before actually starting the heel. My last socks, I only made one pair ever and they were not the best fit. I just did whatever the pattern called for for the size foot that my foot is. And that did not work out probably because of my gauge so I'm just paranoid and I don't want to <laughs> deal with it right now so we will see if they ever get done um, other than that I am actually working on a list uh, of what products I want to take with me if you guys were not aware and I don't know if I actually mentioned it anytime recently but I will be going to California in the next couple of weeks which I am so excited um, I will be going to um, San Diego and that is next month um, August the second complete week of August which is the 11th through the 15th I will be in San Diego uh, Yolanda I have sent you a couple of messages hopefully you receive them let me know if it would still be or if you would still be able to maybe meet up one of those days um, it will be pretty awesome and also Z let me know if you have any days off I will be traveling to I will be driving to Los Angeles one of those days just to kind of spend a day there and see all the, you know, all the tourist attractions or whatnot around there. So I know that's your area. <laughs> so if you have any of those days free, that would actually be ideal. We can definitely hang out. Again, just let me know. And um, again, I'm just excited because it's like a vacation time for me. Um, I'm going because my husband has a work thing. So... I'll just be sticking around doing my own thing. I have uh, looked up some tourist attractions around where I, where I will be staying. And there's actually a lot around there, like maybe, you know, 15 minutes or less. So I'm pretty excited about that. I also have looked at uh, some of the yarn shops they, they may have. And supposedly they do have a couple. So I also kind of excited to look at those. Although... You guys, if you have seen my stash, my yarn stash video, uh, you probably know I am on a yarn diet. Ideally, until uh, Thanksgiving or the Black Friday 
uh, season, you know, just because the sales during that time are usually too awesome to pass up. But it just depends how, how it goes on this trip. Uh, we will see. But anyway, that is in the second week of August. I will be coming back. I think that's Saturday on the 16th. So I have no idea when the next uh, updated video will be. Probably during the weekend sometime. Uh, I'm pretty sure we'll have at least one completed project by then. So I'll try to make it then. Anyway, guys, uh, if, you, if any of you do live in California or know anything or want to share any tips with me uh, regarding, you know, where I should go, or what I should do. It doesn't have to be yarn related. If it's also, if you guys are also into video games and it's something game related, definitely let me know as well. I actually have not looked that up, so I, uh, I'll give myself a chance to, to look it up before I go, but if you guys have any tips, that would be pretty awesome. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, check out the rest of the cast approved. The links are below, and I will see you later. Bye.